From the last video, we created this buffer. We bound the buffer to the array buffer binding point. Why is that important? Well, because when we say buffer data, we specify the binding point or the buffer that is bound to that binding point instead of the actual buffer ID. So here, GL buffer data to the GL array buffer binding point. We're sending down this many bytes. Go copy them from this address here out on the stack for now. Static draw, just uh, optimize if you want to, no big deal. Here's our window. We sent down this triangle that, in theory, should go from, let's see, our first point was 0, 1, so up here, 0, 1, down to here, to negative 1, 1, and then from here, we're going all the way to the right, which is 1, negative 1, so 1, negative 1, and then OpenGL, when I tell it to draw a triangle, it will f connect that and and fill in the rest. I actually need to tell OpenGL to draw this, and in order to do that, I need to do some things with vertex attributes. I don't want to get into all the details of vertex attributes right now. We will quickly soon see why they are useful. For now, I just want to explain that vertices have several attributes. You may be thinking, what kind of attributes are you talking about? Well, the number one attribute of a vertice for me, and most likely for forever is its position. Okay, this vertex is at 0, 1 in the y, and this one is at negative 1, negative 1, and this one's at 1, negative 1. So the position is one attribute of a vertex. A vertex can have other attributes like a color. Okay, we haven't really specified the color of our vertices here. We could specify normals, surface normals, yeah, 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 stuff we'll get into later. For now, just know there's more than one attribute. In order to get OpenGL to send the data from the RAM in the graphics card, to actually send it through the processing pipeline, I have to tell OpenGL to enable that attribute. And the only attribute we have right now is position. GL enable vertex attribute array, that's quite the mouthful, but essentially attribute zero, and position doesn't necessarily have to be attribute zero, but since we only have one attribute here, and it is position, it is the first attribute of the vertex, or the zeroth base, the zeroth attribute of the vertex, so now I'm saying, hey, enable the attribute array, or enable this data that you copied down to this buffer to go through the graphics processing pipeline. We'll talk about the pipeline soon enough. For now, just trust me. Now that we've enabled that, I now have to describe my data to OpenGL. When we send our data down to OpenGL, OpenGL just says, oh, I'm going to copy this many bytes from this memory location. Nowhere in this function does it say anything about what that data means. You and I can look at it and say, well, it looks like there's two floats per vertex, but OpenGL doesn't see that. It just when we pass that in, OpenGL takes a void star and says, all right, I'll just take this data and copy it down. So now we need to describe our data to OpenGL. So GL, vertex, a trib, pointer. For attribute 0, the only attribute we have, the positional attribute, uh, the size is the number of elements, or floats in this case. So there are two... And they are floats, so GL, they're floats. I have to tell OpenGL, yes, they are floats. They're GL floats. GL floats. There's two floats per vertex. Normalized means, let's normalize these things as vectors. Don't worry about it for now. For now, just say, hey, OpenGL, please, faults, don't touch my data. And the stride and the pointer has to deal with how compact this data is. We'll talk about that soon enough. For now, I'm just going to put zero on both of those. Don't worry, we'll come back to that. So now that we have our data down to OpenGL, we've described our data to OpenGL. When OpenGL paints, it's real simple. I want OpenGL to go get that data out of its RAM and, and, and render it, draw it. So GL, draw arrays. Okay, mode. The mode is, hey, what kind of data did you send me? Are these lines? Are they points? Uh, I'm going to say GL triangles. All right, and by saying GL triangles, I'm saying this, this, and this are all, consume these three vertices as positions of a triangle. So that's what GL triangles means there. Uh, the first, well, I want to start out at the 
first triangle. There's only one triangle, so zero. How many how many floats are we rendering? It looks like how many triangles are we rendering? It's actually how many floats are we rendering? Or not floats, how many vertices are we rendering? Oh, scratch that. How many vertices, not floats? Well, there are one, two, three vertices. So three vertices, close parenthesis, control F5, build this, run this. Hopefully, oh, it doesn't link because I still have it running in the background. Close that, run it, and I hope we see a triangle. Look at that. Not too hard to get a triangle on the screen. And right, now you'll see that the triangle is not resizing with the window. Let me show you how to, well, eh, should I do it? Yeah, I'll cheat. I'll probably explain this more later, but for now, uh, the viewport is our view into our scene. Uh, just go by faith for now. GL viewport. Notice the OpenGL functions all start with GL. It's kind of OpenGL's way of doing a namespace. They just said, hey, every OpenGL function is going to start with GL. Okay, the viewport says, hey, what portion of the window do you want to render to? Well, I want to start at 0, 0 in the upper left-hand corner of the window, and I want to render the entire width and the entire height of the window. All right, control F5. Build this, run this, and you'll see the triangle reshapes to whatever the width and height of our window is. And that's every draw. You can see this paint GL is being called every essentially every time I resize this, it has to repaint. You can see some flashing there. You know, if I drag this over here, it's repainting portions of the screen.